Hello, my name is James Arroyo, and welcome to Chapter 13, Visual Aids. Previously, we've been discussing a lot of the fundamentals of public speaking. Now, we're going to be talking about Visual Aids. And while Visual Aids is a much smaller part of this overall concept, when it's done well and when it's done poorly, both can have a tremendous impact on the overall effect of your speech. So let's dive right in. What is what are visual aids? Visual aids, also called visual support, are images used in visual representations which might include photographs, artwork, or drawings. This shows the fundamental principle of show, don't tell. That we would much rather show something happening or show how to do something versus telling how to do it. So, Let's dive right in with the types of visual aids. There's two-dimensional visual aids. These include drawings, photos, maps, graphs, and charts. On the left, we have a photo, uh, a drawing. On the right, we have a photo. The big challenge with both of these is that they are a bit pixelated. That That is one of the big challenges, or one small challenge associated with choosing the right images. We also have line drafts. Line drafts reveal trends by showing changes over time. This would be this would be shown in the bottom right example. Next, we have a bar graph. This compares quantities or magnitudes. This would be the top left, symbolized by the bars. Also, we have a pie graph. Pie graph shows proportions of a whole. For example, the bottom left, where the favorite movie type is sci-fi, drama, romance, action, and comedy. And out of all of those, there are different proportions of each. And lastly, we have a pictorial graph, demonstrating comparisons in picture form. As you can see, the birds are symbolized by actual birds and dogs and cats. Next, we have more visual aids. We have charts. Flow charts are a step-by-step -step progression or procedure. This would be shown by the top right. The lamp doesn't work, so you have to check now, is the lamp plugged in? If it isn't, plug in the lamp. If it is, then check to see if the bulb is burnt out. If it is, if it is burnt out, replace the bulb. If not, repair the lamp. So, it shows a step-by-step -step progression. We also have an informational chart. This is a series of key points with data to represent. This would be shown by the top left, where the key points are gre uh, grease, ice cream, ink, lipstick, mildew, etc. And the data is on the left. Next, we have an organizational chart. This shows relationships within the hierarchy, where the things at the very top are the most powerful or have the, uh, or um, somehow influence the bottom rungs, and then the bottom are the bottom. So, for example, these blues are sub, uh, subordinate to the greens. The greens are subordinate to the white and the orange, and then the white is subordinate to the orange. Then we have a table. Table is systematically arranging numbers or words in rows or columns. This would be shown in this example on the bottom left. There's other types of visual aids. There are handouts. When ad additional information that is needed for the speech is not able to be discussed, then a handout might be useful. These should be distributed at the very end to not distract the audience. unless they need it to guide their listening. So it shouldn't be done during, not usually will it be done, be, uh, be passed out before, it should be passed out after. Because let's say that you want to give a phone number or somewhere to email something, then you might provide a handout to make sure that the audience has that information in physical form so that they can reference it later. We also have, now we've gone from two-dimensional to three-dimensional visual aids. Three-dimensional visual aids can include objects, people, and models. They need to be appropriate in size, visible to all, 
and you shouldn't show objects that people are familiar with. This could be uh, an example of three-dimensional people might be the, bot uh, the left example where so the woman is trying to show a push-up. Also, they have to be appropriate in and visible size. If I was to say, here is an air molecule, then of course you wouldn't be able to see it. Also, if I was to show, for example, this is a flash drive, then that may be easy for you to see now, but if I was to show it in a large auditorium, that may be challenging. So as a result, I may instead take a picture of it and then put that, bit, uh, that picture up on a PowerPoint. That way, it's large enough for the audience to indeed see. And we shouldn't show objects that people are familiar with. Next, we have animations. And animations can be very cool. But the thing is, is that if they continue to go for a long time, then they tend to distract. So we want to make sure that they are appropriate to what you are saying. Also, you should use them sparingly, not have so many like I have right here, and have a quick time to end with them. That you shouldn't just have them going and doing and doing and doing and doing, although these are very cute. Next, we have videos, and videos can be very useful. DVDs might be useful. Have you ever watched the movie Glory, for example, when you were learning about the revolutionary, or uh, sorry, the Civil War? Um, so there are some times where DVDs might be useful, but YouTube can be a lot more useful, especially in our situation, because with YouTube, you can queue up uh, stuff ready to go. Also, you can embed it into a PowerPoint, and you could even, um, and it's just little clips instead of having to watch a full movie. Speaking of, let's talk about PowerPoint. PowerPoint is incredibly useful and something that we should use for our presentations because they are incredibly uh, adaptable to different situations. So we, when using PowerPoint, we should embed images, audio clips, and video clips. Have them already in the PowerPoint. If we don't do that, then we have to pull up another screen and put it onto and show it. That just is a bit too labor intensive. Also, use minimal text. You shouldn't have every word that you're going to say on your PowerPoint slide. And make sure that the information is needed, that uh, you are not just putting the entire outline on the speech. Instead, just use little indicators to show where you are in the speech. Also, you should make it clear that you, in this situation, it is pretty easy to see every single one of these. That being said, account for light on a PowerPoint, uh, in the lighting of the room when you're doing a PowerPoint pr uh, presentation in a classroom or in an office. But in general, you also want to watch out for s random um, fonts. We also want to make it colorful. You can create your own template with different colors, but you have to consider, again, the lighting of the room when choosing colors. Because while these green and white might be very easy to see in most situations, and while uh, black and purple and uh, maroon, uh, red, yeah, I think that's maroon, crimson, that all of those may be easy to see now, but may be a lot harder to see in a room with poor lighting. There are many options, all of which can be found in the Design tab on PowerPoint. Also, when using PowerPoint, you may want to have a black screen between different uh, segments because this allows for the audience not to see anything, and then it's just you being seen. Also, we have, so there are many great benefits with visual aids. 
many, uh, the first big benefit is that it makes the speech more interesting. It helps add variety. You get to look at things and hear my voice and watch a video and hear my voice. And then all of that. And, and to uh, look at this awesome graph and then listen to my voice. It assists altering your, in altering your delivery pattern and it also makes it easier to understand the message of the speech. It also helps in, uh, enhance the speaker's ethos because it demonstrates at a small, at a level, uh, a level of understanding and preparedness because you understand the concepts enough to create a PowerPoint in it or a visual aid, and also you prepared enough to actually have a visual aid. Some other benefits are that it improves comprehension and retention. Visual aids are concrete, whereas words are symbolic and could possibly be abstract. So it helps the audience in general see what you're talking about. Instead of talking about an apple, you can show an apple. Instead of talking about a natural disaster, you can show the natural disaster. And it also helps advance your argument, helps make the point and promotes conciseness that instead of saying, that people are struggling or people are suffering due to this policy or um, situation, you can show it. And that is far more concise and to the point. When in, uh, we also have to take into account the situation. We should consider the audience. What visual aids will work for a young audience or an, old, or, or an older audience? for an audience of students, for an audience of working professionals, all of which are things that you should consider for your visual aids. Think of your speech objective. What are you trying to accomplish? If you are showing us how to do something, then you might actually use your body, use three-dimensional objects to show us how to do it. Also consider what you are able to do. If you are trying to show us how to build an engine, or then you might not be able to bring in a car and show how to do that thing. And consider also know the room that you're presenting in, because if you are in a room with poor lighting or good lighting, or if you don't, if you have a TV instead of a big uh, screen, projector screen, then that's going to change how you are able to present your visual aid. So there's many tips for success. First, provide the source of the visual aid. When you, uh, if you are using, especially with graphs and charts, just like with statistics, you have to provide the source of the visual aid. Otherwise, we don't know where it's coming from. Also, make it easy to see. Prepare and polish your visual aids. Because if there are things like, oh, I don't know, misspellings, then it can be very distracting. Don't use illegal or dangerous visual aids that, or those that would offend the audience. One example, randomly one time someone brought a switchblade into class, not for any bad motive, but because they it was something very meaningful to them. It made the audience a little bit uncomfortable. Also use them sparingly and professionally. You shouldn't be using, uh, again, uh, law of diminishing returns. Also keep them simple. That if, for example, if I was to show this graph, I may highlight just one particular instance. That way I can show what I really mean. Also select the right visual aid for the situation. Plan and choose the best type of visual aid to show what you mean. And make sure that everyone, again, can see it. Now with delivery, you should also control when it is being displayed. Because if you are talking about something that's no longer relevant to what is up on the screen, you may want to just black out your screen. Also talk to the audience, not the visual aid. This is uh, talking to your audience is a lot easier in this situation because your PowerPoint will probably be right here. So what this is more in tune to is when you're looking at a PowerPoint and then you look back. 
Also, don't dim the lights for long periods of time, otherwise the audience will fall asleep. Also, don't use blackboards or dry erase boards. When you do that, then you are writing like this, and that can be very distracting and, obviously, it's going to be hard for the audience to see your face. Also, explain the purpose of the visual aid. Why is this visual aid, sh or what is this visual aid showing, and why is it important? Also, don't pass things around while you're speaking, and practice with the visual aid. Practice with the visual aid is incredibly important, because if you are using 3D models especially, but even tech like a PowerPoint, things can go wrong. And what may work in your mind may not work in your delivery. Also, if that is especially true with tech. Uh, Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time. That is a specific, uh, especially true with tech. And if you practice once, twice, three times, that can help you, uh, help make sure that the visual aid will be uh, effective and that there won't be any technical issues. With that, that concludes visual aids. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you next time.